It's 9.30 at night. I haven't seen my husband since seven this morning and he has been at work this entire time. I have no idea what time he's gonna be home. I don't know if I have that level of dedication in me to be an effective teacher. I've been going through stuff that I've written over the last year and a half, two years, uh, from various teaching classes and methods classes that I've been taking. And I mean, at points on paper, at least I look great, but I keep going to that same question of, you know, will I fail? And I'm fairly certain that has to do with the fact that I was not that great of a student because I couldn't hear very well. And so a lot of the, you know, instructions that are given on assignments, I'd miss. And then I'd be too scared to ask what I missed because then that would be yet another instance where I have failed. I feel like that with this project. I wonder if I'm being a hypocrite. I mean, I'm expecting that some of my students will fail, and I'm expecting them to learn something from that failure. And so perhaps my questioning of my own failures and not taking away something from that is hypocritical. I can't be the only one who feels this way. I mean, seriously, I don't even have my own classroom yet, and I'm already talking about how I'm going to fail at being their teacher. I mean, who does that? Another day on campus. Another $120 towards this degree that I don't know if I'm even going to use. I mean, here's the books. I mean, like, just the physical books for four classes that I'm taking this semester. And this just covers the ones that I had to buy. Come here. Pretty please. Can you tell me where I am? You want to say Sam, why are you doing this? Why am I doing this? Um, I am doing this partly because I can't really see myself doing anything else. Um, partly because I originally wanted to go into bioethics. And I realized I'd have to go to Cleveland and that did not sound appealing to me. Um, and so, this is the next thing that I feel like I can do.
I suppose. <laughs> can't shake this nagging feeling that I might be making a mistake. I mean, is there really any way to prevent failing? Other than, I mean, yeah, you can do a whole bunch of research. You can, you know, read all the right people. I mean, Catelyn Tucker, Atwood, I mean, at what? <laughs> at well. <laughs> I mean, does reading about all these people who are these amazing teachers really help? I mean, yay, Kelly Gallagher. Awesome, Kimberly Campbell and Kristen Latimer. Nancy Atwell, your special class that you made up. Penny Kittle. Okay, so she's kind of awesome. Kirby and other people and John McWhorter and a billion people in this and got even, you know, Mrs. K from, you know, the, these people that everybody's heard. Okay, so Antero Garcia, not so much. This guy's kind of a dick when it comes to reading. I mean, I have no idea where he's coming from, but basically claiming that all Y lit is just out there to make, you know, gobs of money for the movie industry. And, you know, basically bashing everything about series. I mean, like, any book that has more than just one book in it is, you know, just out there to grab the reader and make as much money as possible. And then he frickin' has the gall to quote Lemony Snicket. Hypocrite. It's like, the more I read all these teachers, the more I wonder how realistic they are. I mean, do you have, are they asking the same questions that I'm asking? I mean, it's like I've got these two opposing forces on either side telling me different ways. Basically telling me, you know, what I want to hear. Um, I mean, like, the angel on this side is saying, hey, you're doing great, awesome, keep up the good work. But the devil, he's over here saying, you suck. And that's all you're good for. Yeah. instance of failure. I'm going through this, finding all the frickin' mistakes that I put in and apparently forgot to take out after it's been published. Chad put in his hearing aid, threw on his practice shorts and shirt from the day before, tossed his cheer gear into a duffel bag, grabbed his backpack and said, I'll see you in a bit. Another kiss. Joel smiled. I love you. Chad smiled. I know. God damn it, you asshole. Why you gotta be all Han Solo? Just say it back. But he didn't. I know how it feels to be big bashed. I know how it feels to have my face smashed. I know how it feels to get my ass slapped. I know how it feels to get my So 
someone slashed my tire. All day, staring at the ceiling, making friends with shadows on my wall. All night, hearing voices telling me that I should get some sleep because tomorrow might be good for something. So why are you planning on being a teacher? Uh, I had really great teaching te teachers. I had good experience with teachers and I would like to project my good experiences on other people so they can have good experiences. I think I might be onto something. I mean, am I going to be one of those teachers that's just like, uh, whatever, kids be kids and let them basically just do whatever they want because I have no actual control? Or am I going to be the one running away? <laughs> Am I any more of a failure than a system that perpetuates the myth of the importance of a five paragraph essay? Huh, I should just close this. So I'm going through Penny Kittle's book right beside them and I found something that basically is like how I feel. And maybe this is why Maybe this is why I'm going into teaching, you know, maybe it's not about the question of whether I'm going to fail or not, but how I approach that. Um, uh, it, it's, I'm just going to read this. It says, I love teaching writing. It is one of the central joys of my life. I look forward to learning from you and with you as we aim to improve our skills as writers. It's hard work, but your writing will improve through regular feedback and revision. I can always find time to provide extra help when you need it this semester. We can read and discuss your writing together, or think of ways to approach an essay. Don't be shy. Come and see me for help. We can plan for a time that works in your schedule, either before or after school, or even during your lunch break. Bring cookies. I like cookies. Nom, 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 nom. So I goofed earlier when I accidentally said Margaret Atwood um, as an influence, you know, for teaching. But the more I think about it, the, like one of my favorite quotes is actually one of Margaret Atwood's and it's about writing. Um, and it's, uh, oh, what is it? It's a word after a word after a word is power. And it's one of those things that, I mean, maybe it was subconsciously just in my head that this is an influence on me even though I've never actually read really anything by her I just kind of know her through like writing circles um but that's that's something that's like a quote I want in my classroom
I just did a Google search on Margaret Atwood and now I am obsessed. So as much as I like to give Nancy Atwell a lot of crap for her, I mean, like creating her own school and then basically having, you know, a lottery decide who gets to be in it and by a lottery, like only the best of the best kind of thing, um, where they get so much more one-on-one -on -one focus than they would at, you know, a typical public school. Um, I decided to start rereading uh, her book in the middle. Um, and it's like right from the get-go, uh, I find out like what motivates her. Um, and I get to demonstrate what's possible, teach what's useful, establish the conditions that invite engagement and support the hard work of literary reading and writing. And... I want to do the same thing in my classroom, even if it's, you know, in a class of students who do not have that same empowerment that, you know, some of her students do. Um, I just, I don't know. I, part of me wants to make a difference, and the other part of me thinks that that's just completely an unrealistic goal. One, two, Does it have to be? be a teacher? I want to be a teacher because I love kids and I love to see them succeed. I already work with kids with disabilities and it's just amazing to see them accomplish amazing things. classroom from just like erupting into chaos. Why am I even worrying about this? Or am I going to scare my kids so that they're just like... <laughs> what have we here, buddy? Mysterious scribblings? A secret code? No. Poems, no less. Poems, everybody! <laughs> the lad who reckons himself a poet! <laughs> Money get back. I'm all right, Jack. Keep your hands off my stack. <laughs> New car, caviar, four-star daydream. Think I'll buy me a football team. <laughs> Absolute rubbish, laddies! Get on with your work. Repeat after me. An acre is the area of a rectangle whose length is not for long and whose width is this one. We don't need no education. We don't need no thought control.
from being all like my first day. <laughs> Look at me lesson planning. Breathing a sigh of relief, Cherie went into the bathroom and turned on the faucet. Nothing came out, so she tapped the top of it, thinking it might have a clog or possibly even a small rock, something she found was common with their old water well. Still, nothing. Becoming frustrated, she put her head under the spout to see if she could find what was causing the faucet not to work. Unable to see anything blocking the water's path, she moved her head out from under it. Hmm, she thought, wondering what she could do. Suddenly, a thick, red liquid started gushing out. It looked just like... blood. Quickly, she closed her eyes as the warm, heavy liquid poured out of the aged faucet, thick and red. Fresh blood, Cherie said with a pleased smile as she sniffed the perfumed air, opening her eyes to admire the sight of blood splashing over the sink and onto the counter. The beauty of the red covering the avocado sink reminded her of Christmas was more than she could handle and practically had to resist, lowering her face in to lap the blood up with her tongue. But she couldn't. As if in trance, she plunged her face under the faucet, gulping down the warm liquid flowing out of the tap, savoring every salty, sweet drink some trickling from her lips and over her chin, down her neck. After having her fill, she wiped her mouth with her bare arm, smearing it across her face. A look of complete satisfaction was over her. The plumber must have finally died. Pulling open the cabinets under the sink, she peered in. The plumber was there, his eyes wide open and his face filled with horror, a pipe wedged into his slightly hairy bare chest. It was barely possible to see the Billy on his navy blue shirt right above the company logo. Plum and get it. Small amount of blood having leaked out, covering most of the badge. So pale. So frightful. So... dead. Peace? I hate the word. As I hate hell. All Montagues. I had a dream last night. Cause it looked just like a dream. I've got to get out of here. But it looked like a dream. So I have no idea what I'm doing, but uh huh. Mercy, mercy. I think that drop will kill me. Probably not. I think my luck I'd end up on this wire right here. With like Stop this whatever that is. Oh, was that the teacher? Go home! Why do you want to be a teacher? Oh, uh, I want to be a teacher because I love kids and uh, I see a need for quality teachers. There's a shortage anyway, but I figure uh, I taught 15 of the 22 years I was in the Army and most of them were kids anyway, so it just extends right on into, you know, this part of my life. Just not 
taking for granted that everybody's going to understand you on the first go-around. But, I mean, like, so, I can't tell you how many times that I've sent in my work uh, to, uh, like, editors or, you know, publishing houses and, you know, about a quarter of the time they've sent me something saying that at least they've received it. Um, and if out of those quarter, maybe a tenth have, you know, responded with rejection letters. And out of those, I don't know, dozens and, I mean, 70 or 80, I've received one with feedback. Uh, so, and, and, and it's all logical feedback. I mean, it's nothing that, that I can't argue against. And so, but that one piece of feedback saying why they weren't accepting my work, why they did not feel that it was appropriate for, you know, their company, um, made me realize how invaluable that particular failed adventure worked. I mean, it, it, in my life, I, I was able to take that advice and run with it. I mean, there was, there was like specific things in there. Like one of the characters was just too flat and unrealistic. And so it was just like, wow, thanks. I need to know these things because in my head, they're like these real people. And on paper, they may not look like that because I see it but, you know, having somebody else take a look at that work and say, wow, yeah, there's something here, but not yet. And, I mean, I know that that is technically a failure on my part to not convey what I want in this particular character, but how I approached that was not, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I looked at it more along the lines of, thank you, let me fix this. And that's kind of how I want to approach my classroom. I was just like, I don't want to let them think that they just turn in one thing and then they're done. I want them to understand the value of revision that, you know, just because you didn't get it right on the first time does not mean that what you have to say is not worthwhile. September 7, 2002. Princess Diarrhea. Yeah, I totally had sex. I mean, I know there, <laughs> on the flip side of that, being, you know, the object of rejection can be scary. I mean, I know that, especially when you're serving on, like, a selection committee for a project, and, you know, it's an anonymous, you know, selection committee, so you don't know who wrote what pieces, and you're reading, like, like people are talking about your work, and they're just, like, calling it, like, tired, and, 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 uh, uh, worn out, and, and, you know, this, this, why would anybody be writing about vampires? And, <laughs> and, you know, you're just like, oh, God, yeah, this piece sucks. Just throw it away. Um, but what I decided to do with that is I, um, last November, I was just like a lot of like classmates were doing that whole NaNoWriMo thing um, for another class. Uh, uh, with their um, professor, who's a high school teacher, Steve Massart, and I found, you know, myself, like, intrigued by this. It was just, like, I've never tried to, like, specifically, like, sit down and just write for writing's sake, you know, to try to push out so many thousand words um, in a short span, but, I mean, my classmates already had a 10-day advantage on me before they started, they told me that they were doing this project, and... So I was just like, pulled out my iPad and just started, you know, 
basically writing the scene that would have come before the piece that I submitted and was mocked for being tired and worn out, and then the piece after. And then I found myself going to some really, really um, dark, awkward places that I did not think I would write. Uh, so this particular piece, which I thought was, like, originally, like, planned out to be, like, you know, another young adult literature novel thing going on, quickly turned out to be, like, an adult erotic, uh, vampire thing. And I don't want to take that away, so it looks like... I'm going to be going down a different path with this particular book, which means I have to ask myself, do I start another, like, offshoot of my publishing company? Do I just split it up into three sections, you know, have the adult, the young adult, and then the, the children's section? Or do I maybe try yet again with an outside publishing company for this particular piece. Um, and I think just because I personally am very invested in this piece, I will probably keep it within the same universe because, I mean, even though it's slightly more graphic than some of my other work, um, it still takes place in the same universe. Like, there are characters in this novel who are about 10 to 12 years older than they were in previous works that I've had these characters in. Um, and so it kind of feels like a natural progression for me to include them within the, uh, this connected universe, um, which frighteningly starts with a group of fourth graders and now they're adults. Um, who are doing very adult things. So yesterday I went to a podcast, um, like talk, uh, to toying around with the idea of starting a podcast with a friend of mine at school, and it's like not going where we thought it was going to go, and so we're just like, eh, it might not be what we want to do. And then this DJ gets up there, and he's all talking about why he wants to be a DJ, and it's just like, he said, um... something that made me realize that I might be approaching this in a different, in the wrong way. Um, and it was a, accept the mistakes, not the failure. And I've been approaching this as a way of learning from failure, but no, you, you learn from the mistakes Failure is not learning from the mistakes. Um, I mean, it's just like, oh, crap, really? I... Oh, um, and another thing that he said that was amazing was uh, re re uh, reflect... Uh, what was it? It was reflect on the good things that you're doing and not the things that you can't control. And then something that I found super uh, cool that he said was um, starting a conversation that you feel uncomfortable with. I mean, I'm pretty much doing that now with this. Um, and become empowered by your compassion. I mean, kids don't think of that.
teacher? That's not an easy question to answer. Um, probably because what Jody said, like you're as a teacher, you're a lifelong learner as well as a teacher. And I think as, you know, technology goes and like learning goes, things are always changing and, you know, I can't always be in school to learn things. And I want to be able to show, not show, but share my knowledge with students. And I want to be able to learn from them as well. I don't want to just like teach to them. I want to teach with them. Like I want to engage with students, not at students. Uh, Jody's phrase, um, sage of this stage or like guide on the side. I was like, I want to be the guide on the side. I want to like have like, I want to like present my students to like, look, I helped them get here. Like look what they did all by themselves. Like that's my goal. That's what I want to do. So I guess that's why I want to be a teacher. Just, I want to like, look what he did all by himself. Look what they did. Look where they got. They got their diploma. Like, that's why I guess. What else would I do if I wasn't going into teaching? Acting. To be or not. Line. Dancing. Eat cheese. So over this last year, I've been a mentor for uh, one of our kids at church uh, as it um, going through confirmation and I've been spending a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with her and she's a lot like me and then she's a perfectionist and we've been going trying to figure out like you know a faith statement that we want to present uh, to the church um, more for her, but we've both been going through the same process since I've never gone through confirmation. And so being a mentor added that, you know, that extra pressure onto me. And I have to say, I really, really like working with kids in that aspect, that that one-on-one -on -one trying to figure out, not just the faith statement thing, but like figure out what, she wants to say and seeing that progression throughout this year I think really explains why I want to be a teacher I mean I'm already there I mean I'm pretty sure I know a few things that I want in my future classrooms um, a library is a must uh, unfortunately, I gave up most of my uh, books to my husband for his class library, but that's how important I feel that it is. I mean, I was willing to give up my books for somebody else who did not have 
and he when he became an English teacher after being a history major because that's how schools work you've got a history degree so now he teaches English and drama and film production and creative writing and so um in my classroom, I really want that library, and I want a small space, like, that's just dedicated to that. And I know that this is, like, becoming, like, oh, wow, you've got some unrealistic goals here, Corey, because, you know, classrooms are kind of tight. Um, especially since, you know, I, I, I really want to teach in a school that's probably on the lower income side of the equation, and I want to do you know, be involved with uh, more of the disenfranchised um, population um, than, say, the more affluent communities. And so, I mean, that's one of the reasons that I really want to push to have that in my classroom. And I think, for me, another thing that has to be there is there has to be some blank space. I do not want every inch of the walls covered with stuff because when, I know for me at least, when I'm trying to focus, like I'm trying to be, you know, in that creative mindset, the first place I look for is like a blank wall to just clear everything else out. And so I know that having you know, free space, basically, where there's nothing is so important. And I also know that having, you know, sharing uh, your work with your classmates or having it posted in front, you know, with the class, that's another space that I want to have. I want to have, you know, just like, hey, look, these are the, you know, this is what we, the culmination of our, our hard work is up here for everybody to see. And... I know that for me that would have been like a terrifying thing, but the more, the older I get, the more I get giddy when I see that. Um, and so I don't necessarily want to like push students to have it up there, but I'm definitely going to encourage them that, you know, you, this is a good thing. And I also want to create an environment that allows students to feel safe because I know for me um, growing up as you know a gay kid uh, who had to keep denying my sexuality for fear that I was going to get beat up for that too I mean it was bad enough that I you know got teased and bullied and was suicidal in middle and high school um, Because other for things that I can't control, and so in my class, I want I I need to figure out how to do that because that is so personal to me. I am not trash. I know no class. I shan't bash nor feel out the past. But then do I? Still have the right to claim I know white privilege. You know what? Can't fail if you keep trying. <laughs>